today we are going to do our um, story sequence based on the mitten um, this book is by Jan Bratt um, hopefully you guys um, went ahead and picked up your kits because this is what this is going to be about first we're going to read this book um, in your kit you guys did get your animals I hope you guys have already kind of cut them out and they're ready to go and you have the mitten and you have this book. I'll explain this to you later. Okay, let's get started. Let's find out what happens with the mitten. Once there was a boy named Nicky who wanted his new mittens made from wool as white as snow. At first, his grandmother, Baba, did not want to knit white mittens. If you drop one in the snow, she warned, you'll never find it. But Nicky wanted snow white mittens and finally Baba made them. After she finished, she said, when you come home, first I will look to see if you are safe and sound, but then I will look to see if you still have your snow white mittens. So off Nicky went, and it wasn't long until one of his new mittens dropped into the snow and was left behind. A mole, tired from tunneling along, discovered the mitten and burrowed inside it. It was cozy and warm and just the right size, so he decided to stay. See the little mole? He's going inside the glove. A snowshoe rabbit came hopping by. He stopped for a moment to admire his winter coat. It was then that he had seen the mitten, and he wiggled in, feet first. The mole didn't think there was room for both of them, but when he saw the rabbit's big kickers, he moved over. Next, a hedgehog came snuffling along. Having spent the day looking under wet leaves for things to eat, he decided to move into the mitten where it would be warm. The mole and the rabbit were bumped and jostled, but not being ones to argue with someone covered with prickles, they made room. As soon as the hedgehog disappeared into the mitten, a big owl, attracted by the commotion, swooped down. When he decided to move in also, the mole, the rabbit, and the hedgehog grumbled. But when they saw the owl's glinty talons, they quickly let him in. Up through the snow appeared a badger. He eyed the mitten and began to climb in. The mole, the rabbit, the hedgehog, and the owl were not pleased. But there was no room left. But when they saw his diggers, they gave in to him. It started snowing, but the animals were snug in the mitten. A waft of warm steam rose in the air, and a fox trotting by stopped to investigate. Just the sight of the cozy mitten made him feel very drowsy. The fox poked his muzzle in. When the mole, the rabbit, the hedgehog, the owl, and the badger saw his shiny teeth, they gave the fox lots of room. A great bear lumbered by. He spied the mitten all plumped up. Not being one to be left out in the cold, he began to nose his way in. The animals were packed in as tightly as it could be. But what animal would argue with a bear? Then the mitten swelled and stretched, and it was pulled and bulged so many times its size, but Baba's good knitting held fast. Along came a meadow mouse, no bigger than an acorn, and she wriggled into that one space left and made herself comfortable on top of the great big bear's nose right there. The bear, tickled by the mouse's whiskers, gave an enormous sneeze. <gasps> Chew! and the force of the sneeze shot the mitten up into the sky and scattered the animals in all directions. Look at them go. On his way home, Nicky saw a white shape in the distance. It was a lost mitten silhouetted against the blue sky. As he ran to catch his snow white mitten, he saw Baba's face in the window. First she looked to see if he was safe and sound, and then she saw that he still had his new mittens. All right, that is the end of our book. Now, everyone can get out their mitten. And we're going to see if we can um, remember which animal went in first. Let's see if we can do this. All right, the first one was probably the mole, right? Because he was tired from tumbling. So we're going to stick it right inside the mitten like that. And then the next one, I believe, had a fuzzy little back end, right? A little tail, right? 
the rabbit. So we're going to stick him right in like that. And then both the mole and the rabbit, they were kind of afraid of an animal that had prickers, right? Which one would that have been? I'm going with the hedgehog. So we're going to put him in. All right. And then as the three were inside, what happened next? I think it was an owl, right? He had the shiny towel on. So we're going to we're going to grab the owl and we're going to put him in. Yep. All right. The next one, I believe, is going to be this, this badger. Right? We're going to stick him on in. And then who was walking by? And the, all the other animals were like, hey, we need to make room for him. He's got shiny teeth. He's the fox. So we're going to stick him right in there, too, just like that. And then, of course, we can't forget the big bear. He said he did not want to be left out in the cold. So all the animals most certainly moved out of the way for him. And then we have one more left. And it was the mouse, right? Because he got right up on that bear's nose and made himself nice, comfortable, cozy. Okay. Does so anybody remember what happened after the mouse got on his nose? Who ended up sneezing, going, achoo! That's right, it was the bear. And the whole mitten exploded and all the animals came flying out. But in the end, Nikki did get his mitten back. So, there you go. You guys can also take this. This is what I got this for you guys for because mom and dad can go ahead and go through this book with you. And there's other books at the library that you can do story sequences with or other things at your house. Um, you can come up with different ways of teaching your children how to make patterns or story sequences. All right, I hope you enjoyed this. See you next time.